a very good evening to one and all i ms siddhi sharma welcome you all on behalf of one of the finest institutions dy patel international university akurdi pune to the birthday celebration week day 3 of our very beloved our very own honorable vice chancellor professor prabhat ranjan sir i would now take this golden opportunity to welcome our honorable vc professor prabhat ranjan sir thank you siddhi thank you for welcoming i hope welcome, this third day of the session and viewers enjoy this i would like to apologize to viewers that my facebook profile due to some settings last two days was not available it was available on the university website today i hope this should be working fine thank you so sir here i have something really special from you it's really special for you janamdan ki khushiyan barqarar rahe aapki muskan yu hi barqarar rahe जैसे सूरज चांद की उम्र लंबी और खूबसूरत होती है आपकी जिंदगी भी यूं ही बाग बाग रहे थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रोफेसर प्रभात रंजन सर अ पर्सन विद गोल्डन हार्ट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फिनोमिनल पर्सनालिटी अ साइंटिस्ट एंड मोस्ट ऑफ ऑल अ बून टू ह्यूमैनिटी हु हैज प्रूव हिज लव फॉर फॉर द मदरलैंड विद हिज न्यूमेरस कंट्रीब्यूशंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मोस्ट ऑफ ऑल ह्यूमैनिटी सर flowers to your garlands of achievements are endless and we hope that this garland goes on becoming blooming more beautiful every day so here when we are on day 3 of celebrating your birthday i wish you many many happy returns of the day sir thanks again thanks again well sir beginning with i am keenly interested in knowing sir once anyone leaves india they tend to settle down in the foreign country what motivated you to return to india so i as a student uh, i finished my masters in physics in 1981 and i went to us to university of california berkeley to do my phd work and uh, i would tell a incident interesting incident so when we reached there uh, within 3 4 days there was the international students advisors office they used to organize sessions for all the international students to train the orient them in the, to the new country so we had about half an hour session the advisor you know talked about all the things that were important and then he asked that is there anybody has a question so one of my indian friends uh, rakesh alabadi i don't know where he is now he got up and the first question he asked was how can i get green card so as you said that most of the people who uh, reach us their first on their mind is that how do i get a green card so they can stay uh, forever there but this thought was never in my mind i knew that i was going to do my phd there and come back so i don't think for any uh, minute at any stage i had this thought in my mind uh, thankfully it worked out because one of the issue was that when i got into deeper fusion research i had taken this decision uh, at the moment uh, of thought i discussed yesterday and at midnight just before leaving the country i wanted to come back and serve the country that was the reason i got into nuclear fusion and while i was doing nuclear fusion research there in us in india also the nuclear fusion research had started so suppose it had not started then i might have find it difficult to come back but then luckily luckily for me the work had started so i could just come back without much problem of course Uh, when i came back i did not have a you know uh, full time not full time it was not a permanent job it was a temporary job for one year but i knew that if i come back i would prove myself that people will want to me to continue so for, never i thought that i would stay there i never tried anything like that and i came back immediately after my phd i finished in 1986 nothing within two weeks i packed up and came back thank you that was really great to hear sir that you have always been a great patriot for your nation well i Thank understand you. that you got married and had your child when while you were a graduate student in the us how did you manage your yeah. graduate studies and family commitments together so uh, i had an unconventional marriage uh, i married one of my classmates from kharagpur we were also classmates in delhi university uh, she joined me after 1983 i got married and she joined me uh, after about 6 months uh both were both of us were in physics she decided to actually shift from physics because she felt that both of us getting jobs in physics would be difficult so she moved to computer side 
she took certain courses in, in Berkeley for about a year on computer side. And uh, I think it was cooperation from her that was very important uh, because when you do PhD, you're engaged in the research work and uh, you know, time is not important. Everything has to be done. A good thing that my supervisor did was that even in those days, he, when we didn't have computer, internet and so on, he allowed me to keep a terminal in the home, which was connected through phone line. So some of the work I could do uh, from home, and especially when there was conferences, some important conferences, then we used to find the computer system is to get loaded. And uh, I had to do certain work early in the morning so that when I reach office by the time system should be ready. So that also helped in this process. Of course, uh, my daughter was born uh, about maybe when she was uh, in, uh, six, seven months old, we returned back. So when she was born, of course, I waited for six, seven months. Uh, it helped me in the sense that I was not in rush to finish my thesis. So I got little extra time during which I did some of the work I mentioned yesterday. And uh, so it all worked out. And uh, the other, of course, helpful thing was that my wife was also uh, in, in favor of returning back. So many times it happens that when you marry, marry uh, maybe the family members do not want to come back. The other thing that happens typically is that when you have a child and the child has grown already, and then both uh, you know, the, the spouse and the children, they want to stay back in the US. So many times people, even they want to come back, they are not able to come back. I'll just tell incidents, very interesting incidents. When we were coming back, uh, we had a flight from San Francisco to Los Angeles. And we had to wait at the airport for about four hours to have a connecting flight to Seoul in Korea. While we were waiting, there was another Indian gentleman. He was also a professor of sociology in the University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, we started talking to each other. And then when he learned that I'm returning back, suddenly tears started to come out of his eyes. So I was very surprised. He was a very senior person that why tears are coming out of his eyes. So I asked him that, no, what happened? Uh, did I say something wrong? He said, no, I've been wanting to go back to India for the last 20 years and so on. I cannot. My children are growing up here. I do not like it. I keep sending them to, to India every summer so that they learn the culture of India and so on. But I'm stuck here. So there are a lot of people who actually stay there for some time. They think they can make some amount of money or establish themselves well and then go back. And then it doesn't happen. So luckily, I never had these thoughts. And my family members supported it. So we could manage both the personal and uh, 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 the professional life together. And we came back to, to Calcutta as my first stop uh, in India. Thank you. OK. That was really nice to hear to you, sir. Well, they say birthdays bring memories of all the years back. So here, we have one of a very special guest that has been a part of your life. I request N.K. Mukho Upadhyay, sir, uh, a retired scientist. He was the head of the cyclotron unit, Variable Energy Cyclotron Center, while VC, sir, was working at Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics. I request, sir, to please share his his valuable memories with VC, sir, with all of us. Hello. <coughs> Hello, Hello sir. I. Uh, yeah, before NKM starts, I would like to tell that his name is Nitai Mukhopadhyay. Nitai Kumar Mukhopadhyay. We all call him NKM only. He is not known by all his full name. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. He ve he's very senior uh, to me, by the way. Very senior, very, very, very senior to me. Very, very. Very senior to me. No, 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 you know, uh, in fact, I can tell you that uh, uh, there is nothing called seniority in this case. Prabhat is loved uh, by everybody and he is a very simple person and uh, nobody can claim that he is senior to him. At least I never think. I treat him as my own brother and we met first time in, at Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics. He uh, did his PhD in Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory. Uh, there he worked for some time. Uh, very long time back, I had some opportunity to visit that cyclotron uh, made by uh, Professor Lawrence there. I was very happy when he just somehow approached me for some help. Uh, he was working on plasma discharge cleaning of the Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics uh, tokamak. It's a small tokamak, but a lot of research was to be done, and Prabhat took the challenge. So he wanted to have some sort of a supply which will give very large current for a very short time, 
and um, he just came to know that i was working for several thousands of amperes uh, power supplies and also um, something to do with some personal computers so he approached me and i tried my best to help him uh, there are a lot of um, difficulties those days in uh, our laboratory and in general any laboratory and uh, you know the innovative persons are normally not taken care of but i found prabhat was a very innovative person so i just came forward and helped him out of the way and uh, he did wonderful thing and i took some interest i never knew much about tokamak i read something about that tokamak and later on when he moved to uh, institute of plasma research of gandhi nagar there he was working a, a tokamak called aditya and he did all the instrumentation himself using computers i can tell you that uh, he was uh, actually very good in nuclear instrumentation and also in computers i remember that uh, he gave me a software and uh, those days uh, people did not know much about viruses then i took dumps of the sectors of uh, various floppies and found that certain uh, files system files dot sys or command file dot com and executable file exe they are getting attached their file length is increasing and um, i used to clean manually using a software given to me by prabhat Uh, i was very grateful and <laughs> what i used to do is that i used to take some software from somebody and used to uh, write my name nkm incorporated and whenever some people used to ask me that where did you i uh, was telling that it is not me it is prabhat who actually Will, I think we'll come back. back. Yeah, ah, yeah, I come back. Now, uh, yeah. somebody told that he used to take up challenges wherein he had very little knowledge about that uh, item where he what he is handling. But uh, uh, I had some similarities with him. My childhood days also I used to do something which was crazy. And another thing, very interesting, he is from Bihar. his language is maithili many people do not know that bengali language is a derivative of maithili language so that's why i was very much interested i uh, my uh, uh, cooking is my passion so uh, and also uh, eating various items he was very fond of litties i come from college street calcutta and there was a litti shop uh, by sharmas on the footpath and i used to bring litties and he told me that uh, nitaida uh, do you take chattu i said yes yes i you know but very good chattu are not available so he dragged me to salt lake food path where somebody was selling to the uh, thela wala and we used to buy that and uh, we used to eat them so my uh, another thing great thing is that our prabhat ranjan is that Uh, even a um, uh, few months back and many years or every year whenever he used to come to kolkata he used to visit me i am very lucky and he presented me a document which gave a road map of india up to 2035 i think no 2035 35 and um, I, i went through that i found this very nice documented um uh, thing which he presented to our uh, prime minister and also uh, he i used to um, keep myself uh, uh, you know uh, any new things he used to do he used to tell me for example he took the uh, some disabled persons brain signal or eye movement and he used to uh, make them operate some computers to so that and i got very much puzzled when he was with the ambani's and he made a simple simple thing i must tell that how innovative he is 
you know mukhe sam i'm going to, to i'm going to talk about that tomorrow i'm going to talk about tomorrow you okay. are leaking then, the ticket so let's come back to this <laughs> i will call you back I, i'll call i'll call okay. you back uh, okay. at some point okay. so thank you very much okay. thank you very much i'll call you back what tomorrow 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 to, today today also at one When point uh, I, i want you back today also i want you at, back at some point just okay. please wait in the back okay. so uh, you know as robert says i can talk i can talk about hours so i think uh, i stop here so i would like to listen to him and other people about him okay thank you very much robert happy birthday thank, to thank you thank you for coming yeah I'll, i'll please stay back yeah please just stay back thank you for your time sir well sir that was really nice to hear from some of your colleagues back there well in the us you had access to few of the best computing facilities of that time in the world how did you cope up with those facilities in india so uh, i had mentioned this yesterday also i got exposed to computer in iit kharagpur when we had no access to computer actually we were not allowed to use computers to be frankly uh, we had a course in fortran programming language which you don't hear now it is mm-hmm. but that was the main uh, scientific programming language at the time and uh, we had one course on that and uh, we were not allowed to use computers we should only do on pen and paper and the instructor used to examine that so i had interest in computer from that time when i went to us uh, i tried many things that i have talked yesterday uh, we had for my research work i had access to computer uh, which was the fastest in the world so mm-hmm. these were cray series of computers cray 1 and 2 had just come in uh, and uh, this was being used by all the people people working in nuclear fusion area in us as well as japan so there is a combined uh, center uh, we used to use it was at lawrence livermore lab we used to use it from remote uh, only so a lot of my modeling work was done there there were very large schools that that i used to run i had to of course modify many of them to make them run when i came to india actually to science school of nuclear physics which is one of the major national labs in the country set up by uh, Uh, Meghna Sa, a very renowned scientist. Uh, I found there was no computer at all. The only computer that I had was the personal computer that I had brought from US. Other than that, even not a personal computer was there in the lab. So naturally, for my work, which required the fastest computers in the world, I either I could have got frustrated and said that I would not want to, you know, work here, go somewhere else. I had offers from Bombay Atomic Research Center also, but I did not want to do that. I have never taken uh, constraints as something to get defeated by. So it's always I wanted to work and make sure that we create the conditions so that those constraints can be removed. So actually, I started to work on buying computers there. I was very junior person. I had just joined in a one-year position, and so I did not expect that people would pay attention to me. But somehow, I'm not going to details. I could work through the system, convince the director that we can buy certain computer which is going to cost less. Uh, I can see Amitav Rai coming in, who is also at Valley Valley Sector Center. We have had just like N K Mukhopadhyay. He was also there. He joined us. He just said hi. Uh, so. I actually worked on getting computers. There were a lot of controversies, but finally, at lower cost, I could get a decent quality of computers. For which, actually, I had to. At that time, uh, we were not allowed to fly. Actually, by thing, we were juniors. We had to only travel by train. I had to go to Delhi, Mumbai, um, Chennai, and Bangalore. And I was permitted by director to actually uh, do that. So, I. could manage to get the computer but it was not easy to shift the softwares to these computers so we had to almost like i had to work for one year to get the uh, computers uh, the softwares working there and it started to give very good results and uh, later on as i will probably discuss that how it helped me in, in throughout my life so the point was that while i was used to computers uh, fastest computers i could manage to buy not that quality of computer but something cheaper but i could buy whatever that money could buy at that time which means that you had to get away from traditional way of thinking and buy something that was best for the money and i had a lot of opposition on that but finally i succeeded and i could you know uh, transfer my work in fact uh, uh, i'm not going to those details probably but there were a lot of interesting incident when we purchased the computer 
So let, let's move on to the next question and we'll uh, see how we do it. Well, sir, your life really sets an example that one who has to and has the will to do something will surely do it, no matter what obst obstacles they have to face. Well, sir, due to this attitude of yours, there are a lot many people around who love you and respect you a lot. So here we have a small video message for you. I request the host to please put it on. Hello, sir. I'm Sandeep. I'm wishing you a very happy birthday. Namaste, Prabhat Ranjan, sir. This is Banu Prakash reporting from headquarters. I wish you very happy birthday. Congratulations, sir, on completing Sashti Purti. I pray to God that you should also complete one more Sashti Purti. Thank you. So your birthday has not just added a new year to your life, but has also added lots of smiles to everyone's faces. You can see them people wishing you from all the world around. Well, Thank you. getting back, so there has been so much buzz around computer science since the, since the past two decades. But you have been working on computers for four decades. How do you see this journey? So, as I mentioned that I had exposure to computer in IIT Kharagpur, out of my own interest, it was not something that was required. I had to actually hide and go into computer uh, punching card room. That time it used to be card punch system, uh, type my programs and give it to my electronics friend who could run those programs. And of course, the computers would not run all the time. There would be problems. So, I continued with that interest and I went to US. There also I did many things. I'm not going to those details. But uh, the main change that uh, I saw was that early in computers were very costly. Uh, it used to be at certain places. Like I said that the whole of US and Japan used to use one computer center in Lawrence Labor Mode Lab, which we used to all access from a distance. So that means uh, we would not actually be seeing the computer. Uh, we had to, I used to get only three minutes of CPU time per day, only three minutes of CPU time. That in my, my program should only will be able to allow for three minutes time. And then that's it. Then I have to wait for another day. So it also meant that we had to actually work very hard on optimizing our program so that we could make it very efficient. So even after running the fastest computer in the world, I actually worked on making uh, many changes that I'm not going to go into details here, which made it fast by seven to eight times so that, you know, it, it runs much faster. So we had to use that limited amount of CPU processing time that was available to us in uh, the best way. Today, what we have seen is that with the availability of computers, you know, people are not worried about this thing because they think that they can just get away with the uh, poor program. The second thing that I noticed was that as we had computers uh, at a remote place, we used to connect through modems and we used to work on something called dumb terminal. The dumb terminal means that you type A on that, A will be transmitted to the computer and then computer will reply back, echo back, so you will see A with a delay. Even editing of files was a, a difficult task. Around the time I was in US, the personal computers started to come in. And uh, people started to see that you can we use personal computers also as terminals. So instead of having a separate terminal, we started to use personal computers as terminals. There were some software called terminal emulators, which allowed you to connect to the computers. And then people realized that since we have intelligence in the computer, personal computer, why use it as a dumb terminal? Why not use some of the intelligence uh, that are locally available? So then, for example, people developed the thing editor that means part of the file was brought into your local computer while you're editing. And then as editing was going on, you could send the data back and so the things could be done a little faster. As it kept on happening and as the processing capability of the personal computer started to increase, so why do I even need to send the program to the main computer? I could run it on my own computer. And slowly it just happened that people started to say, I have enough resources on my computer. Why should I, I use that? And uh, I will just tell you that the Cray one computer, which was considered the fastest computer at that time, and the Cray took a little later uh, toward the end of my PhD work, uh, had only 16 megabytes of RAM. Today, if I buy even a mobile phone with 16 megabytes of RAM, people throw at me, that is like a brick. I cannot use it. So you have 4 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes, 15 gigabytes, of course, the computers are much larger. So we 
to work with a lot of companies. Later on, what happened is that as the time was going on, there was a play between communication uh, cost and the processing cost. The processing used to be costlier, slowly the communication started to become cheaper. And then we came into what is called cloud computing today, where actually we throw jobs at the cloud, for example, a lot of artificial intelligence work, data science related work is done on the cloud. Instead of having those personal uh, resources at your place, throw it uh, at the cloud and get the data back. So we have come back uh, around the circle. We started with the same thing that we had first uh, center, computer center, you to throw the job there. And today, for of course, many things are using personal computer, mobile phones, but very serious scientific work, or otherwise data processing, which requires a lot of power, we still using the same thing because the computer has become much cheaper. So there has been a complete game. I was very fortunate to be associated with the whole journey of computer. I was in Silicon Valley myself, you know, and uh, that place, in fact, I remember when I was returning back, I think I mentioned it yesterday also, the returning back. One of my secretaries wrote to Apple computer, uh, they were using Macintosh computer at that time, that was the first one that became popular. They said that uh, he should not be allowed to go back, uh, he knows too much about uh, Macintosh, so please give him here. But uh, so I picked up that, I have learned all kinds of programming languages, I'm not expert in them, I picked them up as needed and move on. It's been a very interesting journey, and uh, of course today India is doing quite well, but uh, we, Still don't have the best computers in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Well, you returned to India and joined as a scientist in Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics, Kolkata, at a very young age. How was your experience as one of the youngest scientists in the scientists in the institute? So um, I completed my PhD in India at age of 26, and. Uh, uh, to tell you, I was in I was in Bronx for the lab. When I finished finish my PhD, my advisor told me that you are the youngest one to finish PhD in the, the group that we were working in, which was called Magnetic Fusion Energy Group. And uh, when I came back to Science Institute, uh, I had many of my colleagues who might have been 10, 12 years senior to be in age, and they uh, were still doing PhD. In fact, many of them were doing PhDs. And, uh, and there were some people who would uh, have just finished PhD, but maybe 13 years, 14 years senior to me. It created a uh, little bit of rivalry uh, because uh, uh, because of my work, the, the director and others uh, wanted me to do full time on a, a regular job. I was initially given a one year uh, job on contract, and that also created a little bit of controversy. Uh, but what I have found is that over a period of time, they've all become friends with me. And uh, my focus was not to, to uh, belittle anybody else. I focus on my own work and not to worry about what others are thinking. Or, you know, I was not trying to disturb anybody else. But at the same time, I would like to say that uh, I did face many problems. There were uh, efforts to sabotage. There are all kinds of efforts that were done in, uh, in my journey at, at many places but uh, uh, I as I said that I, I kept focused on my work and, and, and moved on thank you thank you sir well in your last talk we have heard you telling students that you would uh, you mentioned about bringing the Sun to the earth what was that about so let me share my screen so that I can say, show some graphics that will make it easier for viewers to understand some of these. Uh, uh, let me get it working. Yeah, uh, now I think it should work. Um, let me pick this here. Yeah, uh, can you see a slide uh, with sun on this? So actually, 
the nuclear fusion research tries to emulate the process by which energy is uh, produced in the sun. So in the sun, uh, the process is hydrogen to hydrogen reaction that happens at very, very high temperatures. You can imagine about you know, one to two crores degree centigrade. And uh, for last uh, almost, you can say, 70 years, there has been effort on the earth to try to uh, create the same process and produce energy, uh, limitless energy. So I, as I mentioned yesterday, I got into the field of nuclear fusion. Our effort was to emulate sun on the earth by so that we could produce limitless energy. For this process, we had to create nuclear fusion reactions on the earth. Now, normally for this purpose, uh, you can, uh, those viewers who are interested, actually, they can look into my blog where I've talked about how I got into nuclear fusion research. Uh, there's a hydrogen isotope, deuterium and tritium. These need to react to each other and produce helium and neutron and energy with, uh, along with it. This process happens at very, very high temperature. Temperatures we need to create on Earth are like something like 10 crore degrees centigrade. You can only imagine 10 crore degrees centigrade. What we did was to actually, uh, we tried to confine, so when you heat up a gas, we uh, have three states of uh, matter, one is solid, liquid, and gas. To heat it up further, it breaks into ions and electrons. And roughly, I will not say technically, roughly that is called plasma. So we were doing plasma physics, so we had to create plasma, hydrogen plasma or hydrogen isotope plasma and confine it so that and heat it up to very, very high temperature and make sure that it does not touch any surface for which we used magnetic fields and not the technical features of this. So this process of heating uh, plasma on the earth by making sure that you don't destroy everything around it is what we are working on. Uh, just to also tell the viewers, actually, I know the form many of them would have heard by the same process, but initiate hydrogen bomb, we atom bombs uh, to be exported in India in 1998, actually, as part of the Pokhran uh, 2 experiment, did explode hydrogen bomb. So, the when we talk about bringing to earth. This was the process that we were involved in, and it is very interesting, and uh, a lot of work is going on this. But in India, I have worked at the two places, and Gandhi Nagar Institute of Parliament, two places were there for 14 years, and Lawrence Berkeley Lab, about two years. So, about two years I have spent in this area. And uh, just to tell the viewers, actually, uh, why we expect that uh, by conventional means, we will take another 40 years. By 2060, we expect to commercialize. What we are seeing a lot of good signs of this happening much faster. And the best estimate, best optimistic estimate is that by 2035 or even by 2020 or 2045, we may start to see nuclear fusion energy happening on that. So let's stop at this and let's proceed to the next question. Thank you so much, sir. Well, you started your research with computer modeling and then later extended your work into experiments as well. How did that happen? Right. So uh, I would refer viewers to a blog that I've written on that, how I became accidental experimentalist. This was actually the title I stole from a book that was written by uh, Manmohan Singh, Prime Minister. I wrote this blog around the same time. So that I the experimentalist. Uh, when I did the uh, art and modeling in science of nuclear physics, there was very little knowledge in the country about nuclear physics in the very early stage. Uh, I might have mentioned yesterday that I was the first PhD professor from the India to PhD in nuclear physics. But we tried to, uh, I got the computers working, I started to modeling. And I started to find certain problems with the computer, uh, with the model. It was not matching with experiments. The reactor in Science Institute of Nuclear Physics, Calcutta, was actually fabricated by Toshiba according to our requirements. And the Toshiba uh, had given all the uh, details, but they had not said that the experimental 
part, they're not guaranteed. They said that the engineering part is fine. Everything will work as it is. But experimental part, they did not guarantee. They said that we are not sure how it will work. It's an experimental thing. You can work on it. So when I started to model, I found that the modeling was not matching with the experiments. So in that case, uh, I was using a very uh, large model that I brought from US. Uh, it has 60,000 lines of codes. I actually wrote down, uh, I threw that away. I wrote a very simple code, ignoring most of the things about maybe about 400, 500 lines. I don't remember now. And I found that impurities were a problem uh, which was probably affecting the, the performance of the nuclear fusion reactor. It's called uh, this particular style of nuclear fusion re reactor is called tokamak. So I will use this term tokam tokamak many times. It is a Russian abbreviation of toroidal magnetic chamber. So tokamaks are the mainstream devices right now uh, for magnetic uh, uh, confinement of uh, plasma uh, matter. So when I thought that, okay, there may be a possibility of impurities coming in and affecting the performance, you have to clean the inside of the vessel. Uh, when uh, Mr. N.K. Mukhopadhyay was talking about, he talked about that a little bit. So I said that, okay, we have to clean it. And I talked to which scientist is working on that. Uh, so people who are in the experimental groups, one of them was supposed to work on this. So I talked to him and said that, you know, how long is it going to take for you to get it re get ready with this? He said that it will take him about three to four years because he has to import a lot of equipments which are not available in the country. I felt that I cannot wait for four years to actually verify whether my model uh, is uh, telling me correct thing or just telling me wrong thing. So to prove my model, I decided that, you know, can I do the experiments uh, and try to develop this cleaning system and i had no experience i had no experience of this kind of work and the traditional way as my colleague was doing would have taken three to four years so i wanted to do something which i could do very fast and which can be done within the country so everything that we are buying should be available within the country that was a decision that i made which meant that i had to think in a very very different way very very different way I, as N.K. Mukhopadhyay is here, I, uh, maybe we can bring N.K. Mukhopadhyay in um, uh, to the studio if he's uh, still available. So I had some plans in my mind. I went to N.K. Mukhopadhyay and there was Subhimal Saha was there and a few of the electric, uh, electrical experts to try to talk about my ideas. Uh, what in the cyclotron, as uh, N.K.M. was telling, we used to have thousands of amperes current flowing continuously. I needed to have large current, but very short duration of milliseconds duration. So they did not have the uh, exactly the same kind of experience, but I found that a lot of spares, uh, you know, junk, which was thrown away from the cyclotron power supplies were lying around many copper plates and so on and so forth. So I approached NKM and I said that I want to experiment some of these. Can you lend me this? So he, he was head of cyclotron at that time. He bypassed the various processes and all the bureaucracies and allowed me to borrow some of those from junkyards. And uh, I tried, uh, I remember I purchased seven transistors from Calcutta market. And the first time I tried, uh, I got the right kind of uh, signals to see that it may work but whether actually it will do the cleaning part that I was not sure, but most of the transistors blew away shortly. So I went back to cyclotron center, discussed with Nitai and other people and to find out what may have been the problems. I was told that, you know, there is something that you need to do. I'm uh, not going to the, those technical details. So I came back and then I again tried uh, and I did not blow up those transistors. And then I purchased, uh, so I approached uh, Nitai again. As he mentioned that I needed a big power supply so he had a spare power supply. He allowed me to, to borrow that. And uh, I purchased about 150 transistors. Maybe I would like to show some of uh, that uh, picture. Later on, I'll probably show, maybe not to disturb this uh, discussion. So I brought that in. I uh, got ready to do experiment. And his, with his power supply, I had to connect a three-phase variac. The variac actually is like... Uh, voltage variable so you can vary the voltage and it's a three-phase uh, power supply 
which was lying in my group uh, for a long time. So I, I started using that. And one of the Fridays, I remember, I was about to actually, so I connected uh, to the power supply that Nitai had given. I connected to three phase variac and I was about to test. When one of, the, one of my colleagues, he came and told me that I need this variac right now. And this is my variac, you cannot use it. I need it right now for my experiment. Something that was lying for two years there. And I told him that just wait for a couple of hours. It's been lying for two years. But his purpose was not to really uh, do his experiment. He just wanted to interrupt my, my progress. And uh, Nitai is familiar with many of these things, so he's smiling. So I said, okay, fine, I got, I, I got fed up. I said, okay, take it away. And then I went to a workshop where I've seen another variac lying uh, in dust. It's not being used. So I requested the workshop in charge that can you lend me this? He said, it's not working. I said, no problem, uh, you give it to me. So I brought that, it took me about seven days to fix that, to get it working. And then I, I could connect that to Nitaida's power supply that he had given and actually test it. And uh, then I saw that, yes, things were working as expected. And then something very interesting happened. Uh, so I was expecting that the inside of the reactor is very, very dirty. And as per the literature, I would take about seven to 10 days of continuous cleaning, 24 hours cleaning to actually start to see a cleaner uh, plasma inside. So one of the days I decided that I will stay whole night. And for safety reasons, I needed one more person there because you cannot work in the labs alone. That's the standard uh, operating process. So one of the research scholar, uh, I asked him that, you know, I have to be there whole night. Would you uh, like to stay in the night? He said that, you know, uh, in Bengali, you call elder people da. So he said, Pravada, I'm always hanging around in the night. So I will just come and, and stay with you the night. So I started again. I'm not going into technical details. I started cleaning system and uh, I was changing certain parameters, trying to improve the performance. And I got a little bit more ambitious than I should have been at that time because I had only developed part of it. Other parts of systems were still not equipped to handle the higher performance. So around maybe 4 o'clock or 4.30 in the morning, the system stopped working because certain capacitors had blown away there, but heated up. So I stopped at that particular point and actually I went back to my home. And uh, I slept off feeling a little frustrated that I should have not been so ambitious and really, uh, you know, come control, uh, uh, control my parameters to a little lower performance. So after I woke up and now maybe 10, 10, 30, I again came back to office. And while I was feeling bad that I should have been more careful, I tried to actually run the machine to see whether it has really made any difference. And I was surprised that actually machine had become completely changed its behavior, it became much cleaner and it started to perform the way my model was expecting it to. And then of course, uh, I could actually, with that confidence, I became accidental experimentalist and then started to actually uh, plan out proper systems. And then I did many experimental developments in science of nuclear physics. And of course, backup from Cyclotron Center was always there. In lieu of that, as I mentioned, that I used to also help them with computers and various other problems. So it was not only a one-way process. I used to help them out and they used to help me. So it was a good uh, relationship. And inside the campus, uh, there were two institutes. There was no boundary inside. There were two gates outside. One gate was very tight security and one gate was very easy security. But inside, we could move in and out. So that was very uh, comfortable. So these I, I got into experiments. And I must thank Nitaida again for the help that he provided at that time. Thank you, Nitaida. still there okay maybe it's, uh, so we can proceed to the next question yeah uh, is okay he's connecting back yeah i think you got disconnected i just thanked you for all the help that you provided in the initial phase and i was struggling with uh, being an experimentalist so and that that continued throughout so i was doing computer modeling i was working with the experiments i was working with the data equation system so actually, I never confined myself to one particular aspect of uh, thing. I worked on system, whatever was required to do that. And that has continued till uh, today in my life, whether I'm handling university, whether I'm handling disability thing, whether I was in TIFAC, I did not 
feel that anything is untouchable to me. I have to work on all aspects. If I don't know, I keep learning. I keep learning today. For example, this particular software you're using, I only introduce. I first tried it out myself. So learning is very, very important and that I continue. So we need to work on systems. We need to work on problems and not on narrow areas of expertise. So thank you, Nitaida, for joining again. And let's proceed to the next oh, thank question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable time. Well, sir, as today we are celebrating World Environment Day, I would like you to throw some light on your experiences regarding your contributions to the environment. Uh, let me uh, in another way. Uh, actually, when I was in TIFAC, uh, we had prepared Document Technology Vision 2035 which was actually focused on the quality of life of Indian citizen. Uh, I would probably be mentioning more about this later uh, in the series. But uh, in this part of that, we had 12 documents which talked about, uh, one of the documents also talked about environment, environment and climate change. But around 2015, what happened? So around 2015 in Paris, there was a meeting called COP21 where all the countries were to agree to certain climate change related commitments, India being one of them. And we actually around sometimes so this meeting was sometime towards the end of November uh, uh, and uh, first this was about May 15 to 20 days meeting. We around sometime in May or June, uh, I got a request from Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change that we need help with technology related to climate change. So can you help us out? I was not really an expert of climate change, but then we had to take up this challenge and we worked very hard to give technology input, which became part of the document that went into Paris as part of climate change commitment uh, from India. And we were actually invited to be in Paris. We went into, in fact, we hosted a session on technology related to climate change in Paris. And uh, some very interesting observations I had made that I do not have time to go into details. But uh, what we noticed was that technology has brought this problem of a change in the climate. And technology also has a role to play in taking us out of this problem. And so that's why, in fact, one of the statements that I had made there. And uh, so we got involved with that. And then the Ministry of Forest, Environment, Forest and Climate Change started to give all the tasks related to climate change to us. So we worked on a whole set of technology related to climate change. For example, I'll just mention one interesting example. When we were discussing, India made a commitment. India made commitment at the Paris COP21 that we would be planting enough trees or in, through forestry, so that we could have about 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon sink. And uh, we were asked to, so this was the commitment we made. We formed a committee which uh, was formed by me only. In the first meeting we had in Dehradun to discuss this, I suggested that instead, in addition to the natural trees, we could use something called artificial trees. All the forest experts who were there, they immediately said no. There's nothing like artificial tree, we cannot use it, we have to use natural trees. So then explain to them in detail that artificial trees will can capture carbon at thousand times more rate than natural trees. So it will save us lots of land because when you plant billions of trees, you need land space also. So after some time of convincing, they all agreed. So it actually became part of India's climate change plans. So all of this was planned by us. So I was part of climate change uh, convention in Paris in uh, Morocco, in Bonn, the last one that I attended in 2017 before I came to Pune. So we got involved with climate change from 2015 onwards. And that is very, very important for survival of the human species itself. So I think I'll stop at this point. Thank you very much. Please go ahead to the next question. Well, sir, there's an Hindi line saying ki ek hi to dil hai kitni bar jitoge. Where, where do you lack in giving contribution for the welfare of the country, sir? Well, we are really blessed to be under your guidance. Moving ahead. Being a nuclear fusion scientist, you must be working with highly dangerous systems. 
were you never concerned about your personal safety were you ever caught in an accident like unfortunately ever yeah so it's a very interesting question as i mentioned that i was not a uh, experimentalist the first accident that happened was i became accidental experimentalist itself so in that process uh, i was just mentioning that when I, one of the first experiment that major experiment that i was trying uh, during the night time suddenly at 4 o'clock uh, some capacitors blew but one thing we of course had to do always was to maintain certain safety standards so if there are dangerous system we will not be close to that so we did face many accidents i'm going to talk about some of those but it never endangered our personal safety because we always maintained the safety standards that was expected of us uh so the first uh, failure was there as i mentioned that in the night 4 o'clock something failed uh and it was just because i had become a little over ambitious uh, i could have controlled the parameters and not tried to make it very efficient uh but uh, it thankfully it still did its work later on another interesting thing happened this happened in calcutta actually and i must share there were a lot of people who are listening to this they must know that science is not a very clear game so i was ready with uh, uh, another set of experiment which i did where actually i had made a set of power supply to extend the plasma duration which would have which was costing about 2.5 crores rupees if toshiba in japan had made that but we didn't have that kind of money so i actually took up that challenge in about 20 lakh rupees i made it and there were thousands of capacitors very large capacitors and the capacitors these are electrolytic capacitors so to those who know about these actually if you charge them in wrong way it actually creates problem it explodes so one of the uh, days the day when i was about to i would be uh, you know testing the system i came in the morning and uh, maybe let me let me see if i can share the screen to show some of these uh, points let me just share the screen again uh, sorry for the interruption let me see if i can do it let me do it again yeah now i let me i think this time it will work sorry for uh this yeah now it should be working let me move on so this is the machine that was there in science institute of nuclear physics and uh, this is the other view of this this is the discharge cleaning system i developed which clean the system you can see uh, capacitors This is the power supply that I was talking about, and you can see a uh, lot of components here. You can see a lot of blue capacitors here. There are thousands of them. And when I came in the morning, I was just checking these uh, systems before I put it on, and I found that somebody had gone and actually changed positive to negative and negative to positive. And in that condition, uh, he expected that it would explode. But thankfully, I discovered that and corrected that. of course i had certain precautions that i had taken that it would not explode it and uh, the system went successfully so there was no accident there so this was a deliberate attempt to to create an uh, accident in 1995 i moved to institute for plasma research gandhinagar where that was the major research center for the country it is still the the main research center for nuclear fusion in the country and uh, the that time aditya tokamak as probably the viewers might be able to see this was the largest uh, nuclear fusion reactor at that time uh, a very interesting story that was there was that uh, i was working in calcutta on creating a superconducting tokamak a superconduct nuclear fusion reactor and i was invited by institute of plasma research in gandhinagar 
to actually shift over because they had got a proposal for superconducting machine uh, approved by central government. At that time, Prime Minister was uh, Mr. Narasimha Rao. So they said that since you are working on this, why didn't you shift? When I came and joined in Gandhi in August 95, and I met bid director, he told me that why don't you work on the old machine? So this is the old machine, Aditya Tokamak. It was the largest one at that time in the country. In fact, there were only two of them, one in Calcutta, which I had worked on, which was a smaller one, and so the big one. And the superconductor machine was in planning stage. So I was a little surprised with that. And I said that, you know, why do you want me to work on the older one? Because I knew that this had a lot of problems for the last six years. So 89, it started to have the first discharge. And 95, we are talking six years. Uh, there was a lot of effort put in by the director and others to actually get it to working to the uh, standard that was expected to be, but it was not successful. So he said that, why didn't you work on this? So I was a little worried that I'm being put to a task with which uh, I may not be comfortable. It's something not working. People had come from uh, foreign experts had come and spent one month, two months time. It's, then I said, then he said, that, okay, if you're not comfortable, why didn't you do one thing? You spend 50% time on this and 50% on the superconductive one. So I agreed to that. And uh, he asked me about later, two days later, that have you thought of something? I suggested a few things. I'll not go into those details. Uh, for about three months' time, I was not allowed to try those things out. But after some of these, I've written in my blogs. Those who are interested can read. After three months, when I got a chance to actually work on the machine and try out my ideas, I started on Monday and Friday, the machine started to work as it was expected. So within five days, what was not happening in, for six years, within five days, the machine started to work. And then after a couple of months, I was made project leader of this reactor. So at the young age of 35, I was made project leader of the largest reactor, uh, uh, nuclear fusion reactor in the country. If you see this picture, this is one hall, this is a very huge one. And this is only one of the halls, there are many, many associated areas with this. So it was a very huge setup with a large number of different groups specializing in different things working together. In Calcutta, it was a small device. When I was working on the machine, I was the only one. That helped me actually to learn a lot of experimental side as a system-wise. I was not there, so I had to handle everything. I had to handle power supply. I had to handle uh, uh, you know, uh, the vacuum side. I had to handle the instruments. Everything I had to handle. But in this one, it was a big setup. So there was a specialized group for vacuum, for power supply, and so on. So one of the advantages I had when I worked on the small machine in Calcutta that I could actually understand the system as a whole. And when I came here, uh, that concept helped me. Now, coming back to the accidental part, why I mentioned this, because this is where a lot of things happen. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the very interesting things, there's again another uh, page from my blog, Rural Technology Health Fusion Reactor. Other thing that I learned before I go into accidents was that about 80% of discharges in Aditya used to fail. They would not go through. And I found a very, very simple problem that is detailed in this was that there were a lot of ground, grounding pipes that were there. And uh, you had to water them. The watering was being done by maids used to come to clean. They were asked to do that. And nobody bothered to see what they were doing. And I found actually that the water was not being put properly. And just by making that change, and of course, few other things that I don't have time to go into details, those who are interested can, can go into this blog and see. The machine started to perform much better, so the success rate became 90 95% instead of only 20%. This is the inside of the machine. Here, the temperatures are of like crores of degrees centigrade. And so you can see that it, you have to handle it very carefully. One time it happened that there is a uh, let me see if I can show you that uh, device. Yeah, you can see this particular one. Uh, this is a magnet of about one and a half ton. This was at the center of the reactor, center of the reactor. It was weighing one and a half ton. And suddenly there was a failure of this. There was a failure of this. The insulation failed. It was to work at 20, designed to 20 kV. It never actually worked at 20 kV, but we found that insulation failed. There was sparking happened and it stopped working. Now, this was the center of the machine. That means if this doesn't work, the whole machine doesn't work. So I was very, uh, you know, initially taken aback. I talked to the people who had worked with the machine earlier. I talked to them. One of the senior scientists said that it may take about two years' time. You have to reopen the whole machine and then put it back again to get it to work. Another scientist told me that, you know, 
it was very difficult to put the machine together. Once you open it up, it is going to stop working completely. You cannot put it back together. It was at that time that I came across a picture of this in one of the scientists' room, just, just by chance. It was not, not something planned, which gave me an idea. And uh, I worked on that idea. I needed to actually, as you see, I'm not going to the details. This is something that uh, I don't know if people will kind of like when you lift a car, uh, you know, uh, there's a jack. I put car shoes, car brake shoes around this. We welded this and used this actually. So this was put inside that, that one and a half ton magnet. And I'll not go into details of that, but the details are uh, probably I'm writing a blog in which I'll give this detail. It's a very unconventional way. And uh, we lifted this out and picked it up and about 15 days time we took it out from the failure so what i expected will take two years or it will never work we got it work. you can see the happiness on faces of the people we have taken this out naturally we repaired it to work at the full potential and then again never that the insulation failure never uh, took place so uh, let me come out of the screen sharing now uh, there was uh, i hope it was visible was the screen visible yeah. So when we, uh, another time what happened was that as we started to go higher on this particular uh, magnet, then we could go to higher parameters. Otherwise, it was working only at 25% efficiency. When we started to go to the higher parameters, what we found was that there were sparks happening all over the machine. And the sparks were not something that was uh, usual. Normally, sparks happen in the machine because of the fact that uh, there is a uh, no certain insulation failure like happened in this particular case and you will see there is a black dark thing because something has burned what we found was that there was no spark no insulation failure no darkness but the sparks were happening we were seeing it like a ghost it was the spark was moving from one place to another place and so on it took us two three days to actually figure out we're taking camera video pictures from all sides and so on that we figured out due to certain grounding problem and for that i had to open up the machine completely and redo the grounding part and then after they started to work then we could go to even higher parameter once we started to go to higher parameter further one day suddenly there was a blast the blast and everything became quiet i was in the power supply room so normally there's to be sound and uh, suddenly the sound came to a complete full stop I came back to the main hall and see that uh, coils have been uh, the coils that used to be held by certain you know uh, 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 attachments. They had all broken and the coils were thrown. Okay, and there was fire there and so on and so forth. So also water all over the place. It was almost towards the evening time. Uh, and again, not going to details. So. We then actually figured out there were certain design So we took care of all of that. And finally, we could get this machine to work. Uh, this is one of interesting incident, probably we are coming close to the time, was that one day a compressor, which has come air at very high pressure, a pipe had uh, come out in the night. And the night when the pipe came out, it was making a lot of sound, around 10 o'clock. So since I was the project leader, I was contacted and nobody was willing to go at night that time. So I had I went at night to the lab and I saw that all the security people had run away to very far up distances. They thought something might explode. And uh, I realized it was very something simple. So I went inside and actually, you know, stopped the compressor, connected the pipe again, and things started to work fine. So we had to handle, but we had to maintain certain safety standards. Accidents are part of the learning process. And uh, fortunately, it never injured me or something because we always maintain safety uh, you know, instructions that were given. We always maintain that. Thank you very much. Is there any other further question? Well, sir, now we have we have some really sweet messages for you as for your birthday wishes. 
I request the host to please put them on. Thank you. Myself, Dr. Kranti, working as an assistant professor at DYPLU, wishing Dr. Prabhat Ranjan sir a very healthy and happy 60th birthday. Thank you, sir, for all the inspirations and encouragement you have contributed to us. Thank you. Great birthday wishes to great personality. Wishing you many, many happy returns of the day, sir. Thank you. Well, sir, this is not. This is just the beginning. We have one more text video message for you. Uh, just to tell you, uh, uh, Sashi Shikhar, he is a professor at the University of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, he was in my school uh, when we were in a good school style school. He used to live in my ashram. And then I went to IIT. He also went to IIT. And uh, I went to Berkeley to do my PhD. He also did. And in 2008 and 2009, twice I visited him. And we were working on certain joint uh, projects at that time. So uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sashi Shikhar. Well, sir, this shows how loved and respected you are in every field you have worked. Well, your life is so full of experiences and motivation that anyone who listens to it can be filled up with motivation to do something more in life and mostly contributing towards the country and humanity. As a, and a long journey of great 60 years of such a phenomenal personality cannot be summed up in a day or two. So thank you for your valuable time today, sir. As thank we you, come to you, an end you. of today's session, I thank I I thank everyone, especially our lovely audience. This is Siddhi Sharma signing out. See you all tomorrow at the same time. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.